If you are needing a planner that is going to help you to prioritize taking care of yourself, today I have a video for you where I share three different layouts from Happy Planner that you might want to consider for 2024. I'm gonna be going over these planners one at a time and I'll make sure to leave timestamps so that if there's a particular layout that you wanna see more than others, then you can just go ahead and forward to that particular timestamp. I am gonna make sure to wait until the end to share my thoughts, which one's my favorite, things like that, and I will try and strictly keep the flip throughs of each individual planner just basic flip throughs. Okay, first let's start with this be kind to your mind layout. Now, every happy planner comes with like these little information cards that are on the front of the planner. And I've already like taken out all the plastic and things that have kept this together to save time. But this is something new that they started doing a few months ago. And you can see on here that this is a January 2024 start. It is a 12 month planner and it has a layout that they are calling Be Kind to Your Mind. It says on the pamphlet, a written track record of your feelings can lead to a better understanding of your ups, downs, and everything in between. This vertical layout includes daily mood trackers, monthly focuses on the dashboards to help create new healthy habits. And then this one is just a basic overall explanation of how you can customize Happy Planner with their disk system. So this is their classic size. And on the back, there's actually another info card with the layout and information about their socials. I did purchase this directly from the Happy Planner website, but I do believe that this version is available in Michaels. This planner comes with this, I would call it almost like a powder blue disc that kind of matches this on the cover. So it says, show yourself kindness. On the inside, you've got these waves. And as you can see, this is going to be a colorful planner. This is like a hot pink hello nameplate. So you can write your name down here. Plan happy life is in green. And then the guts. So the guts of this planner are going to be neutral as what we have seen recently with a lot of the happy planner products lately is the inside guts have been stripped down. And for the most part, I've seen a lot of them with these polka dots pattern in the middle. So you've got the 2024 calendar, 2025 calendar, and then you've got, I'm not sure exactly what they call this page, but it's basically a rundown of each month of the year and they are dated and it lists out what the actual day is. So let's say you need to schedule an appointment and it's going to be in May. You could use this to like future plan and list out the appointments in, in this spread, or you could list it out in the actual month views, but you could easily quickly see that, you know, May the 15th is a Wednesday. And the weekends you can see are grayed out. So after this, you have what is known as their dashboard page. So the dashboard page in this layout specifically has a section for three priorities for the month, a habit to focus on this month in a little gray box, and then in this area, it's a grid spacing and it says action plan to help form this habit. And you've got a line space area to journal what is currently inspiring me. And then another bigger section for journaling thoughts and feelings. Down at the very bottom, they have listed out what the holidays are for January. This is the January page right before the month view and every happy planner has some kind of decorated page like this on the tab that leads to the calendar. This is how the layout looks for the month. Very clean, no color on it, so you can decorate it how you want. It does have the holidays listed, including National Sticker Day on January the 13th. After the month, you jump into the weeks. And for 2024, January 1st is on a Monday. So the way this layout is broken down is into three sections, how I'm feeling, daily tasks and to-dos, checking in with myself. And each week you have an area over here in the corner. On this week, it says focus on gratitude. And then you have a spot to list how I feel before. So before you practice your gratitude, how I feel, you list 
right there. So you could say sad, mad, upset, disappointed, you know, a feeling. Then you can check off if you're going to practice gratitude for if you practiced it for 30 seconds, 90 seconds, or you can enter an amount of time right here. And then you can list how you feel afterwards. Now, this obviously is not spacing for you to list out your gratitude. However, you could use this space right here to list that out, or you could use these spaces anywhere else to list out what you're going to like your gratitudes that you're going to focus on. This is not going to be the same every week. So the next week you have a focus on breathing. So you list how you feel before and how you feel after. So very similar to the gratitude. This one you're going to focus on affirmation. So it asks you to list out a poem, phrase, or prayer that you're loving. So you can use this space to actually jot down an affirmation, like I am strong or I am capable, or you can use it to, as it says, you can write a poem, a song, a prayer. You can use it to write down a verse, whatever you would like, and that could be your affirmation for the week. And then on this week, you want to focus on compassion, and it has a spot for you to write how you feel before you focus on it. And then it has check boxes for one event, one person, and then a blank, and then how I feel after. And then at the end of the month, it always jumps to the next dashboard. This is the one for February, and it's going to be exactly the same prompts as the one from January. Again, the holidays are listed down here. The February page with the tab is a different design. Then you have the February page and then it keeps going. Now, as you can see, it starts back over with focusing on gratitude. So it rotates between gratitude, breathing, affirmation, and compassion. And this one, because there's a fifth week, it has a journaling one. Focus on journaling, how I feel before. And you can check off if you're going to do one entry, five minutes, and then a blank so you can customize how long you practice and then how you feel after. So I'm going to flip through the rest of these because nothing else is going to change through it except for this. So March is that. And then at the very end of the planner, after you have the final week, you have just one dot grid notes page. And this one has a design on here that blends in with the cover. This is what the back cover looks like. And that is the be kind to your mind layout. This is the classic recovery layout. It starts in January, 2024, and it runs for 12 months. It says here that recovery is a journey, not a destination. Get daily reminders to focus on yourself. Each day has space for writing and guided prompts for reflection. On the back, it shows what the layout looks like. The cover says progress over perfection. And the inside is this soft stripe pattern. The nameplate page says hello, and it has a spot for you to list out your name. And then it has the calendar pages, 2024, 2025. Then you've got a breakdown of the months of the year, January all the way through December. And then you jump into the dashboard page. So the dashboard in this recovery layout is labeled goals. And it's broken down into these categories. Be active, rest, nourish, forgive, gratitude, acknowledge, and action. The monthly calendar for January it has the holidays listed, including National Sticker Day on January 13th. Then you jump into the week. So this layout has the week all on this side. 
and then it sort of has like a dashboard on this side for the week. It starts with to be blank this week. I am going to. So you pick a word here to set an intention, I suppose, for how you want the week to be. Then you list out three habits, and this is a habit tracker, Monday through Sunday. It has a section here that says nurture a relationship, call a friend, meet up with a family member with a little heart. Eight check boxes for like a weekly list, and then a grid spacing for you to write whatever you want here. And you have a weekly check-in, which has five different journal prompts. The first one is, what is taking up space in my head? Have I been selfish, dishonest, or afraid? What can I do differently? Do I need to fix something? Do I owe an apology to anyone? What have I done well? What victories can I celebrate? How can I help others or be of service? On this side, you have a box that is dot grid for weekly gratitude. And then each day of the week, Monday through Sunday, has line spacing and a section for today I feel. And every week, the prompts are exactly the same. I'm going to flip through now all the tabs because the rest of the planner is exactly the same. Now at the end of the last week in December, you do have one lined notes page that says practice kindness and it's got this like dot pattern on the spine. This is what the back cover looks like and that is the classic recovery layout. This is the stress management layout in the classic happy planner size. It starts in January 2024 and it runs for 12 months. It says here, plan to stress less with suggested exercises, check-ins, and journaling prompts. Use the vertical layout to keep up with the provided habits or create and track your own. The cover says, life is a matter of balance. And on the back, it shows you what the weekly layout looks like. The inside cover has almost like a watercolor effect with like a stripe in like a beige. And then the nameplate page has these leaves, stress management layout, a spot for you to write your name. And then it jumps into the calendar view, 2024, 2025. You have your January through June broken down all the days of the month with the weekends grayed out. And then you have July through December. And then you jump into the dashboard page for January. The dashboard pages in this planner have the exercises and habits explained on here. For January, it says, to support you in your daily routine, try to implement the following exercises and habits this month. Utilize the daily habit trackers each week to help keep yourself on track. There's a little circle here that you can write in a motivational reminder. And then it's got the two different exercises for January. This one is breathing. The objective is calming and mindfulness. The action is 90 seconds of belly breathing. And then it has a helpful tip. To keep your mind from wandering, focus on breathing deeply and feeling each inhale and exhale. The mindfulness exercise objective is mindfulness and awareness. The action during a daily habit, focus on the activity itself and what you are sensing and feeling. Helpful tip, let go of automatic judgments your mind naturally makes. Example, good versus bad experience. Then you have a section for priorities. By de-stressing what two major tasks or projects will you be able to complete more efficiently? And then a line section for one priority, two priority. And then another priority section that says, to prioritize and encourage your success, log your progress throughout the month. Write down what worked well for you or what needs work as you move forward. A little spot for the date and then you can log what the progress was. And you have down here the holidays. The January tab says see what wonders you can find. It turns to the month view and it has the holidays listed. It starts on a Sunday. There are polka dots 
on the spine, but they're black, so it's very minimal neutral. And then you jump into the week. It's broken down into basically three sections. The first is the daily exercise and habits, which is a tracker. So it wants you to check off as you complete the exercises. So list it off to the side here. It has breathing and mindfulness. So breathing goes along with the top row. Mindfulness goes along with the second row. So as you complete your breathing exercises for that day, you check off that box. And if you need a reminder of what exactly you are supposed to practice, you can turn back to the dashboard page and it explains the action that you have to do. Then you have a section that doesn't have a heading, but it is lined and it has check boxes. So you can use this like a to-do list. And then you have a really big section that's open and blank. You do have a side column that is grid, and then you have a lined notes section here. So every day in the month of January is going to look exactly the same. When you get to the end of January, it'll flip to the February dashboard with exercises and habits for February. So with this planner, the exercises and habits change each month. So for February, you're going to focus on appreciation and care and reframing. You still have the same motivational reminder, same section for priorities, and then priorities again down here to log your progress. So for February, the action under appreciation and care is to spend 90 seconds focusing your mind on a person or activity that makes you feel appreciation and or care. And then for reframing, the action is to note at least one event daily that leaves you feeling agitated. Reframe your perspective of this event by changing the context of what happened. Example, a bad driver versus a driver who is distracted by personal grief. The February tab has words that say find your center and it turns to the month calendar view. So the exercises and habits, again at the top, it has the appreciation and care and the 90 seconds and then at the reframing one event. So you could use this space here to write out that one event for the day. Let's go ahead and see what March exercises are. So March, there is a journal and then just an exercise. Action under journal is to journal about one positive act you performed or should have performed daily. And then the exercise is to walk at least five minutes per day. March says sometimes you just need a break in a beautiful place alone to figure everything out calendar so you have a one entry check mark you could use this space to do your entry and then the five minutes of exercise you just check that off when it's completed april acknowledge success and set goals so the action spend 90 seconds acknowledging what you achieved today not what you didn't get done action set two goals for the day to keep yourself organized and focused So under Acknowledge Success, it says 90 seconds for you to check off. And then the Set Two Goals, you can check that off once you've set two goals for the day. You can use the top two boxes for the two goals for the day. For May, the exercises are Repeat Affirmations and Visualization. Action is to choose a poem, phrase, or prayer that you love and repeat it twice. Under Visualization, the action is Get Determined to complete one of your goals by spending 90 seconds to visualize what the successful completion of that goal looks like. So it has it repeat affirmation, two repetitions. You could use this space right here to list out what your affirmation is if you wanna do it for the week and repeat the same affirmation every single day, twice a day for the entire week. Or you could do a different affirmation every day and use the space here to list out what your affirmation for that day is and repeat it twice. For June, you have rest and sleep and find the joy. Under action, it wants you to set a reminder to go to bed at an hour that allows you to wind down and get a full eight hours of sleep. And under find the joy action, look up a funny joke and share it with someone. You can also take a moment to reminisce about a laugh you had about something or a laugh that you've shared with someone in the past. The June tab says take time to recharge and it has 
of silver foiling. Shows rest and sleep, eight hours, find the joy, and then you check off here. For July, the exercises are breathing and mindfulness. So it looks like it's repeating back from January. It wants you to do the two minutes of belly breathing. I do believe two minutes is longer than January. I think January wanted 90 seconds. Let me confirm. Yes, January breathing was 90 seconds. So it wants you to do two minutes of breathing. And for mindfulness during a daily habit, focus on the activity itself. So the mindfulness information is the same. July, it says you're widely capable of amazing things. So then you have for breathing, checking off for two minutes, mindfulness, two minutes. So it did change in that the mindfulness does want you to do it for nine, uh, for two minutes. I think in January, that was also 90 seconds. Yeah, in January, it was a 90 seconds. So it's like a progress. And so instead of trying to really focus for 90 seconds, they want you to just focus for two minutes. August is a repeat, it looks like, of the February. Yes, except in February, it wanted you to spend 90 seconds. So here, it wants you to spend two minutes focusing your mind on a person or activity that makes you feel appreciation and or care. Over here, it wants you to note at least two events daily that left you feeling agitated. I believe in February, it wanted you to list out just one event. So they've bumped it up to two. The August tab has some gold foiling and it says speak only good things to yourself. And you've got the check boxes here for the two minutes and the two events for reframing. So you might be able to squeeze both events here or you can use a separate journal to journal those events. September, it wants you to journal and exercise just like it did in March, except you're gonna now journal about two positive acts you performed or should have performed. And then you want to, it wants you to walk at least 10 minutes per day. September says the most important project you'll ever work on is you. You have the check boxes up here for the two entries for journaling and the 10 minutes of exercise. For October, they want you to focus on acknowledge success and set goals. So again, this is a repeat from April. Except in April, they wanted you to do 90 seconds. So here you want to spend two minutes acknowledging what you achieved today, not what you did not achieve. And then for setting goals, to set three goals for the day. In April, it wanted you to only set two. The October tab says take time to watch the clouds roll by. The October calendar has on here World Mental Health Day on October 10th. And then you see it has the acknowledge success, two minutes, set goals, three goals. You can use three of these for your three goals for the day. November, it wants you to focus on affirmations and visualization, which should be the same as from May. This time it wants you to repeat the affirmation three times instead of two. And the action, it wants you to complete one of your goals by spending two minutes to visualize. I believe in May, you probably had to spend 90 seconds. Yes, 90 seconds visualizing the completion. The November tab says be mindful. And you've got the spot right here to check off the three repetitions for your affirmation and then two minutes for visualization on your goals. And then December, the final exercises are the same as in June to set a reminder to go to bed at an hour that allows you to wind down and get a full eight hours of sleep. And then the same thing for finding the joy, look up a funny joke, share it with someone. You can also take a moment to reminisce about a laugh you had about something or a laugh that you've shared with someone in the past. The tab for December is be 
it's in a gold foiling. It says, be gentle with yourself. You're doing the best you can. Then here you have the check boxes for your eight hours of sleep and you're finding the joy. At the very end, after the final week of December, which bleeds into some of January, you have one lined notes page that is not white. It's actually got some of a green to it. Hopefully the camera is picking that up. with some of the leaf print that matches the name page in the front. Then the back cover has this on it. And that is the stress management layout in the classic size. Okay, so now we're coming to the part of this video where I'm going to be sharing my thoughts about these specific happy planners and these layouts. Now, even though I appreciate that they have come out with layouts like this, that kind of have pieces of it within the weeks that help you to make sure that you are prioritizing taking care of yourself. I do have like some thoughts. So all of them have the same pages like this in the beginning. And I believe this is the same in pretty much every single happy planner. I think specifically because these planners are supposed to be for helping you take care of yourself, a great way to use these beginning pages would be to use them like daily habit trackers for either a meditation practice, a mindfulness practice, a yoga practice, something that you are doing every single day and you can time yourself. So for me, I do daily yoga and I already track my yoga minutes every single day. And this layout is perfect for that because it's already numbered and it already has the boxes grayed out for the weekend. Usually I highlight that and that helps me to kind of differentiate when I look back, am I spending more time on the weekends doing it or does it even matter? That kind of stuff. So I think at the end of the year, having this all filled up with something like a yoga practice or a meditation practice, that kind of thing, or maybe even a journaling practice if you want to set a timer and do like 10 minutes. You could even use this to track other health measurements like your heart rate if you're using like a Fitbit or if you're using an Apple Watch, things like that. You can use this for so many different things. So I highly would recommend to Think of something like that to use these for in the beginning, especially if you're going to use the planner and dedicate it specifically just for self-care and honestly journaling. These planners, I feel, would be best used for journaling and not really putting any appointments and to-dos, at least the not to-dos that have anything to do with like cleaning or taking care of other things other than yourself. If it's a to-do to like related to yourself, then you can, you know, list that in here. But just the way the layouts are in some of these, it makes it a little bit tricky. So this one being the recovery layout, I really like the, the prompts that it has every single week. But I do wish that these prompts would change. Because if you do these prompts every single week for an entire year, at some point, you're going to start getting annoyed with it. Let me um, double check and make sure that that actually is the case, that these are not going to switch maybe mid-year, but I'm very certain that these are exactly the same throughout the entire planner. Yeah. I don't see any indication that it's changing. Okay, that's like mainly my only complaint. So you might end up at some point not wanting to journal to these prompts. So I would lean heavily on something else. You can search up, you can buy Google journaling prompts and come up with a whole bunch of free resources with lists of things that you could journal about. And that would probably work. Now on this side here, I would use this to, I would use like a dot marker to indicate what my feeling is for the day. Either in the morning, you can do this or in the evening. 
and then use the line spaces to journal briefly about the day or whatever I feel like journaling about. And this is more open-ended, whereas this is more like a, at the beginning of the week, sit down and just kind of see where your headspace is. You could use this for like actual checking off things to do, but I would, again, with all these planners, if you're going to use, if you're going to get something that's like specific for taking care of yourself and this is more like a journaling type thing, I would specify tasks that have to do with taking care of yourself, like journal, do my weekly check-in. And then of course you can use these over here to track your journaling. And the journaling can be simply writing something in here every day, or it could be in a different notebook or a different type of a journal, whatever you have. It's just totally up to you. But the, the goals here, the categories that they have for these goals are very interesting to me. Oh, and I just realized that it's blank on this side, but then over here it's like a dot grid. So half the page is dot grid, the other half is blank. I do find it interesting, these categories, these are very interesting categories for goals. I guess it being a recovery layout, I wish there was more explanation on them. It feels like there's not enough guidance on how to use this. Gratitude seems to be, you know, self-explanatory. I mean, forgive, is this something that you would write down who you're something you need someone you need to forgive so every month it's like someone that you want need to forgive I'm not sure what action means is this like an acknowledge I'm not sure so I feel like this needs more explanation that there needed to be something along with this that explains these categories a little bit better so that's my thoughts on the recovery layout and for this one this one's the be kind to your mind. There is another version of this that they are calling it like be kind to your mind layout that is like a skinny, I do believe. And if I'm remembering correctly, that one is like a horizontal layout inside and it doesn't have, it doesn't have all this stuff in it. It doesn't have like the how I'm feeling. That was very misleading in my opinion for them to come out with like this version and they have the take care of you in a skinny but it's not the be kind to your mind layout so if you want this layout don't be fooled and think like look at just the cover to figure out which one you want if that makes sense I'm basically just trying to warn you not to buy the wrong thing by accident because this is a classic size and they did come up with different planners in this design the design that they are calling take care of you but this one is the only be kind to your mind layout with the sections for how I'm feeling daily tasks and to do's and checking in with yourself I really like this with the focus every week changing I do wish though that the journaling wasn't the fifth week because then you only have the journaling for some of the months and not all the months I would probably have preferred the journaling before they did the compassion. The compassion is a little confusing to me, honestly, because if this is, I don't know, if this is supposed to be be kind to your mind and you're focusing on compassion, compassion to me, compassion to me feels like being compassionate towards someone else, unless, I don't know, unless I'm just thinking about that wrong. Let me know in the comments if if I'm not the only one that thinks that way. But I feel like the compassion should have been maybe the one that was every... For the fifth week months and journaling should have been for the fourth week instead that's like my only gripe about this particular layer on their decision with that I do like that these all have lines I like that this doesn't have check boxes and the how I'm feeling section you could just use a dot marker to indicate like which of these feelings you're feeling for that day and then just use the space to journal a little bit maybe list out like why you're feeling that way if there's like a specific thing that happened that you have on your mind that is causing you to feel that mood but just a basic happy meh and sad well I guess this one could be just like okay like you're not happy and you're not exactly sad you're just kind of like okay yeah this one's very basic very very basic there's no journaling prompts other than like 
every week they want you to focus on things. So this one is very, very open-ended. So you would definitely need to rely on some other resource to help you if staring at blank lined and if like you're a beginner to journaling, you definitely would not like start there. And then we have this stress management layout, which I believe the first version they came out with this was last year for 2023. And I missed out on that one. By the time I found out, it was already not available on the website. And I was disappointed because I really would have like picked that one up and reviewed that for you guys had I been able to get it my hands on one. But I'm so glad that they did this layout again for 2024 and that they decided to make this neutral. Last year, the stress management layout was very colorful and inside the pages, the guts of it had color. Like on here, there was color. I believe like the actual month was in color. And this one is all neutral there's no color inside at all not even like gray boxes so I really like that about it this one actually I was considering thinking about using for like using as like journaling for 2024 up until I reviewed this just now and realized that the prompts change the exercises rather the exercises every month started to repeat in July so I mean, yes, it ended up extending it. So it's not exactly repeating. So it made it to where it's like instead of 90 seconds, you're doing it for two minutes. But I honestly feel like that was kind of lazy on their part. And they really could have came up with six more activities and exercises to do so that you're not repeating anything. So I don't know. I was thinking about using this as like a journal, but I'm not sure now. I also am not entirely happy about how they've left, left this blank, completely blank, no lines at all. I would have preferred it to have lines or even like grid spacing so that I could use this space more efficiently because I would likely use this for journaling. I mean, I just said that I would use this for journaling. I do like the idea of this and... Out of all these three that I just reviewed right now, this one I feel like is the most thorough out of the three because it gives you something to do every single day. Like it wants you to do these exercises every day and these habits every single day. And it tells you what the exercises and habits are and you don't have to come up with them. And they're all focused on helping you try and manage stress and that is what I'm all about. So if you are looking for something that is going to help you take care of yourself out of these three, out of these three, I definitely would think the stress management or maybe the recovery one. So like, I don't know, if I were to like label them top three, I would say maybe the stress management is number one, the recovery layout number two, and then this be kind to your mind would be number three. Happy Planner is a great option as far as like the quality and the price. It's not like too expensive and you don't really feel too bad if you end up not using it. You can always use coupons. A lot of these products are usually available inside Michael's and they eventually will have sales for them. And then, you know, if you di buy direct from the Happy Planner website, they you know, are big enough that they are, are always having some sort of a sale if you wait long enough. I'm glad that I was able to get these for you so that I could show you what your options are in case that is something that you were looking for as far as wanting to focus on taking care of yourself in 2024 and you think that maybe one of these planners will work for you. If you do think one of these will work for you, let me know in the comments which one you think you would get. I will definitely be doing some kind of a giveaway, but my giveaways are typically done through my email because that's just what I do. It's a perk of being a part of my email list. The link is always in, the descri in my description for my email list to join, but basically the giveaway for these, I'll probably do it before the year's over. 
so that you can have them in your hands before January. I send out an email once per month. It's usually in the first couple of days of the month that it is sent out. And if I do a giveaway that month, it will be in that email. If I do a spontaneous giveaway, I'll just send a random email just about that. But I only send emails once a month. And it usually is just just some words of encouragement, pulling from my own experience and my own journey of self-care. And the idea is that by sharing with you what I'm learning and what I'm going through, it helps to inspire you to do the same. And I always have a section for like planning news. So for the month of October, which is the one that's coming up, it'll have information about things that happened in September or some things that are going to happen in October if I know dates in advance that I am allowed to share ahead of time. So check that out. The link is in the description. And hopefully this video helped you to decide if you want to see more content like this and you aren't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.